It's my great pleasure and an honor to introduce you to the study of syncretics and esoteric etymology, or what I like to call etymologia esoterica grammatica, from the original Greek and Latin roots of the term. So we're going to cover what esoteric etymology and syncretism actually is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into some of the material. Syncretics is a term that I use as a formula for learning, with the term syncretism as the act of applying that formula. Syncretism means the reconciliation of differing beliefs, and it comes from Greek syncretismos, meaning union of communities, from syncretizin, to combine against a common enemy, and I would consider that enemy being ignorance and separation from our common origins. And it comes from the root meaning of S-Y-N, meaning together, as in to sync together. From my perspective, it's about searching through all sources of information despite differing beliefs and opinions, and sifting through it in order to find the similarities, so that we can see how the pieces fit together to provide a much bigger and a much larger understanding and an unrestricted view of reality in order to find the common similarities and the common bonds rather than being divided and separated and arguing over the differences so that we can see how all the pieces and the common similarities fit together to provide a much larger and unrestricted view of reality without declining into arguments and disputes over seemingly opposing perspectives or points of view, points of you, or also declining into debate, debate. The very etymology of the word debate means to beat down to death, to beat down completely, to dispute and to beat down to death. It's about turning over every stone, the good, the bad, and the ugly, in order to see what lies beneath, regardless of our own personal judgment, judging the mind, meant meaning mind, Latin, of what it is that we may find underneath all of these meanings. As I always say, if you fear something, study it. The more you learn about it, the more understanding you gain. Suddenly you know about it, and although you may still dislike it, you no longer fear it because you realize it's not the thing that itself that is ominous, but rather just your limited understanding of it. As the great Terence McKenna has said, it's hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering that it's a feather bed. All information is inherently neutral. It's only when passed through the mind of its observer that it gets imprinted with polarity, i.e. good versus bad, positive versus negative, light versus dark, etc., based on the preconceived notions accumulated by one's own background and picked up from our own social environment. Light is pure information. Thus, all information is light. It's only when weighed on the scale of one's own heart against the feather of truth and then refracted through the prism of the mind that one can easily discern truth from fallacy. When we start to understand how all things connect in one way or another, then we start to see a pattern emerge that illuminates the similarities which connect all fields of study and learning from science, art, language, number, geometry, astronomy, music, theology, mythology, and just about every other area of learning. For me, this journey is all about getting to the heart of the subject matter, where we can finally see that everything has a valid right to exist, so long as we're not imposing our will upon another's ability to choose freely and that includes the suppression of information as well. I often see the greater reality likened to the Universal Library, 
the Akashic, wherein all things exist inside this library simultaneously, parallel to one another, just as books do in a library. And all books have an equal right to exist, and all books have an equal right to be available for anyone to study at any given time. And just because one of them may not be our own personal preference, doesn't make it any less valid to exist. If any section of the library were to be quarantined because of our own personal judgments and preference, then we would be impinging our on another's free will to be able to choose from that section, should they have the desire to. That is how our own personal judgments and prejudices and biases can limit others' growth when we choose to suppress information. Each and every one of us has a completely unique life experience based on all the things we've seen, places we've been, books we've read, and knowledge we've acquired along our own journey. And we each hold a one-of-a-kind piece that fits into a universal puzzle. We now know that history has been fragmented, rewritten, manipulated, whitewashed throughout the millennia. And it's now not only our duty, but also our great pleasure and a joy as a species to be sitting around this universal table all contributing our individual piece of information to fit this puzzle back together in order to see the bigger picture. And if even a single one of us chose to withhold our own unique piece because of how we think others will react to it, then we're doing a huge disservice to the others and as well as to humanity as a whole. Because those others may need that peace in order to finally see what they may have been searching for their entire life, just as I was along my journey. I know if someone had chosen to withhold the things that I now know because of how they thought I would react to it, then I would never be where I currently am today and would not have found the answers that I've been seeking for my entire life along my own journey. And I couldn't imagine what could possibly be more valuable in our experience. To me, that's the ultimate crime, is the obstruction of information and the withholding of information and the lack of transparency. So now that we've discussed my views on syncretics, let's dive into and explain etymology. In order to introduce you to the understanding of the mechanics of word etymology, we're going to show you the very etymology of the word etymology. The very word etymology comes from much more ancient roots, spanning throughout his story and many different cultures and languages, as is the case for all forms of language and communication, as well as words. Etymology comes from the roots of etymologia, meaning the facts of the origin and development of a word, from Old French, etymologie, modern French, etymologie, from Latin, etymologia, and from Greek, etymologia, properly meaning the study of the true sense of a word, from the roots of etymon, meaning true sense, which is neuter of etymos, meaning true, real, actual, related to etios, meaning true, plus logia, the study of, a speaking of, see the logi suffix. So etymology is a compound word which comes from the root words of logia, meaning the study of, and etym, meaning the true sense. So in other words, we're talking about getting to the true essence of what concepts mean by studying the very words used to describe these concepts. Now, let's dive into the word esoteric and how we can apply it in order to gain wisdom and understanding. Esoteric comes from Greek, esoterikos, belonging to an inner circle. From esotero, meaning within. Comparative adverb of eso, meaning within related to is, meaning into, or the prefix en, on, meaning in. To understand further, see the etymology of the prefix en, or on. In English, originally Pythagorean doctrines, according to Lucian, the division of teachings into exoteric and esoteric originated with Aristotle. 
So in other words, the ESO and the EXO could be likened to a donut, wherein the ESO would be the donut whole, which is consumed far less frequently than the EXO, which is the outer ring likened to the rings of Saturn, who is also known as Lord of the Rings, which is consumed gluttonously en masse by the ignorant masses. So the esoteric understanding is the inner house of true wisdom, while the exoteric is the outer shell of false facades, fake masks, lies, and bullshit fed to the masses who are excluded, excommunicated, or exiled from the truth of the inner wisdom of the wise dome, of the inner temple, because they're too busy beating around the bush from being fed bullshit by mainstream institutions. So the ESO prefix is the same as the EN prefix, meaning within, as in endothermic or endocrine, as in the truth lies within you, as opposed to the hex of the X, which is the outer, as in exothermic or exoskeleton, or in other words, the false bullshit of the savior figure that lies outside of you, up in the clouds somewhere. So this is exactly how Hollywood and politics will also show you the character of the two-faced liar, the false facade, and the fake mask, which is the very calling card of the jester, the joker, the jack, the fool, the bullshitter, the politician. And this is exactly why the Illuminati troll COINTELPRO agents, paid trolls, will always show you the one-eyed symbolism of the left-hand path. The jack, the joker, the jester, the fool, because they are the deceiver. Because they only want to cause chaos and confusion. Because they worship the chaos. Because they are so mind controlled by Hollywood that they don't realize why they love the black magic of the chaos and confusion and deception. So you may have not iced or noticed by now that I seem to use my own unique formula of spelling in order to paint an image. That is exactly what I'm pointing out during these teachings and during this study, is that letters are pictographs and images, and we know that an image contains a thousand words, and a single symbol contains within it entire universes of information. So words, symbols, numbers, and letters are a form of code that can be deciphered and reprogrammed in order to influence our percept-ion or perception. So this is not about using this knowledge as a form of manipulation, which has already been done for thousands of years since the ancient times of the phony Phoenicians who gave us our modern phonics and phonetics, as well as our modern alphabet. Does the term hooked on phonics ring a bell? Ring, as in phone, ringing. This is about reversing the programming and mind control that has been instilled within us for thousands of years via government. Govern, Latin meaning to steer or control, and meant Latin meaning mind. So the very word government meaning mind control to control the mind, and our regulated institutions and spelling, which is known as spell casting or spell binding, as in to bind and to tie us into servitude of the mind by using their spelling. So we're actively breaking that spell by breaking down the very words, symbols, letters, and phonics that have been used to paint or whitewash our perception of reality. 
There are many great minds and artists and philosophers, thinkers throughout history who've caught on to this and throughout the ages have left us clues that we can follow in order to understand this great wisdom if we only have the eyes to see it and the ears to listen and the open mind to study and to understand and to gain new perspectives. My vision is to share as much information as possible, which can help dissolve boundaries and barriers between ourselves in relation to each other in order to achieve greater clarity and thus eliminate the primitive monkey chatter response of missed understanding, which leads to separation, argument, or arguing of the mind, and debate. In other words, again, to beat down to death because of our missed understandings. So when we finally, finale, see that every point of view is valid, when we begin to use a formula to break down the walls between our commonly cherished ideas, which are usually the dogmatic result of cultural programming, if I were to imagine a scenario that sums up my mission, I would liken it to sitting at a command center of a universal information hub, working the switchboard, gathering, absorbing information, redistributing out to as many people as possible. Sort of like what mainstream media does, only they are actively sifting out the bullshit from the truth and serving up a pure platter of bullshit without any of the truth. So we are doing the exact opposite of what they are doing. We are taking all information, sifting out the bullshit from the truth, and serving up nothing but the pure, unfiltered, undistilled truth so that people can finally see where things come from and where we can go by understanding these things and how we can better relate to each other without going into debate or without beating each other down to death because we misunderstand each other, because we missed each other's understandings. So I humbly and gratefully invite you to join us on this journey of discovery as we each have our own unique perspectives. that are valuable beyond measure and we can all contribute something special so I want to thank you all for your time and your attention I really appreciate it and to better understand these terms and to look up anything for yourself I'm going to be providing great links and resources within the descriptions below as well as if you'd like to look up these words and terms for yourself go to a great resource that I always turn to is called edamonline.com it's an online etymology dictionary that you can go to anytime a word pops into your mind just go to that site type it in you'll start to see things from a much larger perspective and you'll start to gain understandings of what words mean and where they come from and therefore, you can also gain this wisdom and you can start sharing this as well. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Namaste. Much love, peace, and wisdom to everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.